Hey there, my name is Gerard. I'm a solutions consultant here at Figma. And today I want to talk a little bit about design system analytics, and more specifically, the new library analytics API. We'll see what it is, how to get started with it, and most importantly, the kind of things you can do with it. Now our customers use library analytics for many things, primarily helping to define the ROI of a design system, as well as using data to maintain and grow a design system across their organization. The new Library Analytics API is available to our enterprise customers and enables them to extract and download detailed granular information about design system usage over time across their organization for further analysis and visualization. So the API is fully documented on our website, figma.com developers, where you can find information about all of the endpoints and functions and expected output of the API available for your developers. To get you started faster, however, we've created a script which will run as a, as a Python script on the command line, which will take a Figma file key and actually export four CSV files with all of the data ready for further analysis. Let's dig into how to get started with that. So we're looking at our script and, and you can just clone this repo or download it to your computer, which I've, which I've done right here. The script is found in extractlibrarydata.py and stepping into that script, um, we can see that it's gonna take a Figma access token. This is a unique key that Figma will generate for you. Um, and if this is your first time, you'll actually need to generate a new key because there's a new permission set associated with the library analytics API. The script is also gonna take a file key. Uh, that's the file that contains uh, your entire design system. And that's uh, the key is found in the URL bar um, of that file when you're looking at it in Figma. To run the script, I can head on over to my terminal window and just run that um, uh, as a Python script. And the script is gonna get to work. Um, what it's doing um, while that's running is it's, it's just calling actions by component, actions by team, usage by component and file for a particular time frame. You can also customize the time frame. Figma will store 12 months of data by default. Um, now, depending on how big your design system is, how many components are in there, um, and how long you're looking to go back, uh, this might take a few seconds, typically maybe a minute or two, uh, for some very large design systems. And we are done. Uh, so the output of this, um, of this script is stored in a folder called output, and sure enough, we can see that there are four CSV files ready for future analysis. So now that we've extracted the data using Figma's API, what next? Well, this data is just in CSV format, right? So I can immediately open these in my favorite spreadsheet and begin slicing, dicing, and visualizing the information right there. I might also want to take this a step further and use a dedicated data visualization tool, something like Tableau, Looker, or Mode, um, to ask more detailed questions or combine Figma data with other data sources. So I've gone ahead and used the Figma data to build a dashboard um, in a data visualization application. This one's called Mode. Um, and you'll immediately see that I've got a high level view of the different elements of my design system. Along the top here, I've got some high level metrics, right? The number of components across component sets, the number of teams who have engaged with the design system and the number of files that they've used it in. Moving down, I'm able to see the uh, popularity of my design system over time, the number of attachments and insertions um, for, the last, for the last 12 months in this case. We might also be interested in our design system champions, right? Cutting that information by team and seeing which design, um, which teams in the org have really embraced our design system. Most of these applications have the ability to filter data as well. So if I wanted to filter this dashboard by one team or by one workspace, you can probably do that um, too. Moving down a little bit, um, I'm able to actually cut this data by workspace. Uh, workspaces are a powerful feature to group teams together. Um, and so we're actually able to, to see our um, Figma data on a higher level. This is especially useful for larger organizations. Um, we're also able to look at detachments by component set. Um, this is particularly useful if I'm, let's say, a design system designer. Um, and if I'm observing a component or component set that's getting detached almost every time it's being used, that provides a pretty good data point for me to go and ask more questions as to why that is, um, which might feed future iterations of those components. Finally, let's talk about Code Connect. Code Connect is a new feature which allows developers and designers to work more closely together by providing a bridge between our code base and our design system. 
Now to get started with, um, with Code Connect, we're probably gonna wanna choose our most popular components across the design system. That's gonna enable us to have the maximum impact with Code Connect. And we're actually able to use this library analytics data to establish which are our most popular components across the entire design system, right? Right here, we're looking at our top 10 most used components cut by component set. Um, so this provides a pretty good place to get started to actually have the maximum impact with, with Code Connect. Now, this is really just the start. There are many more questions that we could ask of this data, and we're super excited to seeing exactly what our customers are able to build using this information. For more information on the Library Analytics API, and for further details on how to get started, check out figma.com developers.